book of Numbers, chapter 11, in the King James Version. <clears throat> and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Teborah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes and the manna was a cor coriander or the and the mander was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bedelium and the people went about and gathered in and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil and when the dew fell upon the camp in the night the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, <clears throat> Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that, they, that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And, it, and say <clears throat> thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against to morrow. And ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out of your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, to, uh, said The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. 
and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied, prophesied in, the, in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophecy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers. And they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Gibroth Hatava, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibroth Hatava unto Hezeroth and abode at Hezeroth. Okay, so there's a lot here in the first chapter, a lot. And, you know, coincidentally, as we talked about just at the very beginning, I was wondering why I need to remind people <laughs> at the very beginning, the Lord works with me and the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times what we think is not necessarily the correct decision. Instead of focusing on the, on the Lord in our relationship with the Lord and our spiritual walk, instead of focusing on that, we start focusing on other things and allow our thoughts and feelings and emotions to get involved when they may be incorrect. And then we don't challenge ourselves. We don't stop, take a moment and say, you know what, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling upset? What is the validation here? What is, or why am I angry? Or why even I'm happy? What is going on to make me feel this certain way in this particular situation? Is it of the Lord? Because it is of the Lord, then peace shall flow down. But if it's n something else, then there's a reason why we need to question ourselves, including when we're being asked for information, when we're out being asked to provide wisdom. <clears throat> you know, you get it, at, you may get it almost every day. You could get it from your children, you could get it from family, you could get it from work, you could get it from peers and relatives and, and, and friends. You can get it from anywhere, um, including, you know, social media, even you can get questions. And when you relay answers, those answers, you want to be truthful you want them to align and help out we are to love our neighbor as ourself and so we want to strive and do the best we can in each and every moment so listen to this because the people of israel the hebrews the israelites that have left egypt they're thinking a certain way once again and we're, we'll get to know, you know, as if you read through the NIV, we understand that it's it's rejection. It's rejection of the Lord. However, right now, we're it's still attesting. It's still we're still learning that we're still getting ready to learn that. Um, and so some of the people will rouse up and encourage others to do the same, even though they don't necessarily fully may even feel that way that they, they want to go back to Egypt so listen to this at the very beginning and and when the people complained it displeased the Lord and the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp why because they were talking about hey we're here we are once again we're in the wilderness we're 
even though we have this manna, even though we have something to drink, even though nothing is rotting away, we now have the commandments and the tabernacle, it's still not enough. The presence, even the presence, the holy presence of the Lord is still not enough. They kept once again talking about returning to Egypt, returning to the past, doing things. And so fair warning, bringing past to present immediately, because there's two points in here. They're, they're, and they're really re close, closely related. The first one. And then it goes on to say, um, it, and the um, mixed multitude that was among them in verse four, among them fell a lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? And, and then in verse five, we remember the fish we, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cu cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic, even though the Lord told him he was bringing them to a place of new newness, new mil uh, new, uh, milk and honey, new, new, everything new and f uh, better, better, perfect for them. But yet it wasn't enough. It wasn't whether it was timing, what, because they wanted it now, you know, or it was an also remembrance of things that were of the past, things that were not in a good situation. When they had these, which were not often, if far or few, or something that maybe stumbled on the ground and that they, from an actual Egyptian that had it, then, you know, at the beginning they may have had it, but over time, as we know, they were enslaved. And so during the enslavement period, no, they were mistreated. No, they were starved. No, they were neglected. No, they were treated just like they were, um, you know, you could just do without them, it, disposable. Whereas the Lord saw, no, none of my people are disposable. So let me show you and bring these people out, my the people with the strong arm, and show you how it's done. And that's what he did. But it, the, some of the people, it wasn't enough for them. They wanted things. And so when we bring past to present, we want to make sure that we are walking in the spirit so that we can give proper guidance. We also want to make sure that we're not trying to go back, trying to go back to the wickedness, trying to go back to sin, because we still remember those days when, when you believe in the Lord Jesus, when you come to know him as your savior and you accept him as Christ, you still are going to remember what you did prior to that and things that you thought of and how you acted and, and so on and so forth. You may not see a change, but trust and believe there's a change. There's a, a, a rebirth and there is a freshness. People, once you give your life to Christ, there is definitely a night and day situation. You may not feel it. You may not even see it, but it is there. Whenever we walk in the spirit, the, the Lord's presence is there and other people do see it. So we also remember how we acted. So we don't want to be influenced by the wickedness. And just like how Israel, the Hebrews were once they left Egypt, they're once again looking back. And I hear this time and time again. Oh, I want to go back to the good old days when all throughout the Bible, all throughout the Bible, including even in Job. It's okay to look at the past. It's okay to look at history. It's okay to, and learn from them. However, we are to move forward. We are to move forward in all things. Even when the temple comes, he's like, the tribes will enter from one door and go out through the other door, the opposite door. Why? Because we, it's a, it's a reoccurring thing throughout the whole Bible to continue to move forward, move forward in life. And because there's more to come, the best is yet to come and, and spending our life with him in eternity. I know that was huge. That was long. Before we go on to um, possibly point two, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? 